Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006, the hydrosphere. I want to say a little bit more about photosynthesis and living things. We saw before that the open carbonate system was pretty complicated. It was affected, the pH of the system was affected by turbulence, temperature and of course living things. And that accounts for a lot of the effects in natural waters. And where exactly? I've said before, algal reactions require uh, sunlight. Photosynthesis requires sunlight. So by definition, those reactions occur in the surface. When you're at the bottom, there's not as much light, so there's less photosynthesis. What happens when you get photosynthesis? The CO2 gets used up to make H2CO N, polymer. We can call ourselves polymer materials, but essentially uh, water with a one added carbon. Watery polymer. That's what we are, living organisms. Now, when the CO2 is remo removed, that removes acid temporarily, but it takes a while for that to equilibrate. So, but uh, depending on how quickly the organisms can remove CO2 from the surface, the pH can go up to 10 because you're removing H2CO3. Now, if you consider the stoichiometry of those reactions, uh, there is an increase in alkalinity due to H plus removal, but that's uh, far smaller uh, that's a far smaller effect, um, but it's not temporary, it's permanent. So this is a local temporary effect where the pH goes up, uh, but then it disappears. But then afterwards, from stoichiometry, there's a smaller permanent pH increase. Let's see how that works. Um, so here we have uh, well, it's actually the reverse of this reaction. Uh, this is the photosynthesis reaction from the right going to the left. And we see that it requires 16 NH plus going to, and it produces 14 H plus. So there's a slight uh, decrease in the, uh, slight increase in the uh, alkalinity in this reverse reaction. But that's permanent. Now, when those organisms decay, uh, by decaying, uh, when they die, the reverse reaction occurs, which is what I'm trying to show here. Here is the organism uh, reacting with oxygen, 106 oxygens to form 106 CO2s. By the way, uh, this is a more accurate depiction of living organisms. I said CH2O. If we ignore nitrogen and phosphorus, we have C100, H200, O100. So this is CH2O, roughly, ignoring N and P. But if you want to do things more, a little bit more accurately, you can uh, do ICP on something living, and its chemical formula would be C106H263O110N16NP. This is often used uh, as the standard stuff for living organisms, for mass balance type equations. Anyway, that stuff reacts with water and acid and produces CO2. This is the decomposition reaction. And this usually occurs at depth and therefore it results in a more lasting pH decrease due to CO2 addition. So this pH decreases because of addition in the benthos and the reverse reaction is a lasting pH increase in the surface. Okay, what else? Ground waters and waters from the hyperlimnion of stratified lakes and reservoirs can be hundredfold enriched in CO2 compared with the atmosphere. So that means there's a lot of CO2 coming from the muck that's decomposing down there. And because of lack of equilibrium and exchange, it's hundredfold in, in, enriched in CO2. Which you may actually see in swamps. There's a lot of stuff when the temperature warms up, you can see the swamps bubbling away. It could be CO2 or other gases coming up from the hyperlimnion. The reaction also produces a small pH increase due to H plus removal. Well, that's already said. That's all I want to say about living organisms. See you later.